transgenic plants. The national movement of genes between species can occur through gene transfer mediated by natural processes. This natural gene movement has been widely detected during genetic investigations of various natural mobile genetic elements that naturally translocate to new sites in a genome, such as transsepoons and retrotransepoons. These various mobile genes play a major role in dynamic changes to chromosomes during evolution, yet only happen in a yet only happen in a haphazard fashion. Since about 1930 on, new plant varieties containing the genes of two species were created through the hybridization or crossbreeding by classical plant breeders in order to develop crop varieties with desired properties. They deliberately forced wide crosses by using a number of in vitro techniques such as protoplast fusion, embryo rescue, or mutagenesis, a genetic diversity to produce plants that would not exist in nature. These artificial ways of gene transfer serve important roles in securing a sustainable future for agriculture by protecting crops from diseases and pests and helping land and water to be used more efficiently. Hope, one wheat variety bred by E.S. McFadden with a gene from a wild grass, saved American wheat growers from devastating stem rust outbreaks in the 1930s. However, such breeding was carried out between two related species. From the mid-70s on, another intentional way of creating transgenic plants by laboratory-based recombination DNA methods is introduced. Recombinant DNA technology is a technique of creating transgenic organisms by injecting the genetic material or the DNA of an organism into the nucleus of the reproductive cell of another organism of the same or different species with an aim to produce or transfer a desirable trait. This can be achieved by either infecting plant cells with plasmids as vectors carrying the desired gene or shooting microscopic pellets containing the gene directly into the cell. If all goes well, the transgene will be incorporated into the pollen and passed on to the next generation. Such kind of modern biotechnology and genetic engineering incorporates genetic material from not only related species, but also from unrelated species, in order to create transgenic and genetically modified plants. Even now, the production of transgenic plants and the introduction of foreign genetic material is still a highly debatable issue. A number of benefits as well as risk of generating such plants have been highlighted by scientific studies. One of the main benefits of such plants and crops is the incorporation of some highly desirable traits like resistance to certain diseases, pests, and herbicides, which in turn can increase crop yield to meet the rising demand for food. Another advantage is that with the help of genetic engineering, it is very much possible to produce plants that can tolerate harsh environmental conditions, like drought and cold. Even soil laden with high amounts of salt can be made cultivatable by producing genetically modified plants that can grow in saline soil. In addition, transgenic plants resistant to herbicides and pesticides can play an important role in reducing the use of these chemicals, thereby improving environmental quality. Apart from these, some plants can produce higher level of certain crucial nutrients, which can improve the nutritional quality of the foods. Despite all of these advantages, the development of genetically modified or altered plants 
is largely criticized, mainly due to the fact that these plants can have an adverse impact on the natural environment, ecosystem, and biodiversity. Many have expressed a fear that the genetic material of such plants can escape to other native or non-target plant species. The same quality that is desirable in transgenic plants can be harmful to other species. Transgenes that are resistant to herbicides, for example, can make weed control quite hard if they are transferred to the weeds. Besides, transgenic plants can release antibiotic-resistant genes in the soil, which can make the soil microorganisms resistant to antibiotics. Another issue raised by the critics is the consequence of changing the occurrence and density of prey for natural enemies. Most insect-resistant plants are aimed at reducing the densities of certain phytophagous insects. If the density of prey is reduced, a direct flow-on effect could be a reduced density of their natural enemies. Transgenic potato controlled the Colorado potato beetle is probably responsible for a documented decrease of its specialist predator, ground beetle. 